Benvenuto, welcome to Cherry Hill Home Cooking. My name is Mark. Today we're going to make egg noodle casserole, or so that's what my grandmother called it. Uh, this is something that my grandmother uh, would make occasionally when I was uh, a kid, and I loved it. I have not made it for years. I'm not even quite sure if I've ever made this for Wade, so um, we're going to make it together today, and hopefully uh, Wade's going to enjoy it. It's going to be as good as I remember it when I was a kid. Um, so, what we're going to need. Uh, first thing we're going to need is some egg noodles. Now this is called egg noodle casserole. So, that's our first ingredient. Um, so I've got uh, two pounds of egg noodles here. Of course, you're going to uh, prepare those according to the package directions. So before we start to assemble all this, we're going to cook this and we're going to let it drain while we're uh, getting everything else uh, done. Um, we're going to need uh, some ground beef. We need um, some small curd cottage cheese. We need some sour cream. We need some cottage cheese. Uh, going to need your favorite jar sauce. Um, for this particular recipe, off the top of my head, I think we're going to need 24 four ounces of sauce because that isn't 24 ounces. Um, we're going to need uh, some red or white wine, um, whatever you have open. Uh, if you don't have uh, any red or white wine open or if you don't want to use wine, um, you can either use water. Um, I'd probably use some beef stock instead of the wine. Um, we need some uh, granulated garlic. We're going to need your favorite Italian seasoning. Of course, we're going to need some salt and pepper. Um, and we're also going to use uh, two tablespoons of white sugar. It, that's, you know, optional. Um, there's only two tablespoons. There's a lot of ingredients that goes into this. And what the sugar is going to do is it cuts down a little bit of the uh, acidity, helps bring out the saltiness and the herbaceousness of everything else. Um, we're also going to need a large yellow onion. Of course, just rough chopped, guys. And I really mean, I don't know if you can see, but we've done this a hundred times. Just really rough chop. You don't need to be fancy with it. This is all going to get cooked down with our meat. Okay, I'm going to put that aside for now. Um, and uh, you're going to need some Pam or cooking spray for, to spray the bottom of your pan. And you're going to need a big pan. This is a big amount of food in one, uh, one casserole. Um, the reason I uh, decided to uh, make this is I was, you know, at this time of year, everyone's really busy. I was thinking, hmm, what can we do that's uh, minimal fuss? Um, that's going to make a lot. Certainly would last um, a couple days in our house. Uh, we'll probably have it for, we're going to have it for dinner tonight. Wade will probably have it for lunch tomorrow, bring it to work. Uh, I'm sure we'll have it for dinner tomorrow night and probably lunch the next day. So my point being, this, this is a big casserole. Um, so I would say this is easily going to feed 10 to 12 at one sitting. Now, uh, it also, one of the reasons I, I like uh, this kind of casserole is it really he reheats well in the microwave. Um, if you don't want such a large amount, cut the recipe in half and use a regular 9 by um, 12 uh, pan. This is my pan I use for when I make lasagna. Um, okay, that's a big list of ingredients. I've got my water boiling on the stove now for our egg noodles. I'm going to make that, and then when we come back, we'll start the sauce. See you in a little bit.
All right, guys, so I've cooked my um, egg noodles uh, according to the package instructions, um, and I did them for the seven minutes, which is going to give us a, uh, an al dente a noodle. All right, so I'm just going to drain them. Come out of there. So, we're just going to let them sit there and get all happy. Give them a little shake. Ah, oh, I can't see. <laughs> My glasses are all fucked. All right, so we're going to just um, let those sit there and drain. <laughs> I'm going to get my pot going and we're going to get our uh, hamburger and our onions fried up. So, um, <laughs> If this wasn't a double batch, I would do this in a frying pan, um, but because I want to cut down on the number of pans, I'm trying to make this a casserole that's relatively easy to make and with a little uh, mess. Now, truth be told, if we didn't try to have to, you know, kind of get everything to come together at the same time, I probably would have boiled the noodles in the pan, then I would have used that same pan, I would have rinsed it out and use that same pan to um, fry up my meat and do the rest of my uh, sauce. But because it's easier for Wade to film us from here, opposed to being over at the stove, um, I used an extra pot. But you don't have to. All right? So I'm going to let that uh, heat up a little bit. Um, and, oh, also, I've uh, preheated, pre or put my oven getting it ready What's the word I want? Preheat. I'm preheating the oven to 350 degrees. Um, all right, that's got a little bit of heat on it now. So we're just going to put all of our ground beef in there at once. And of course, when you're doing ground beef, um, we want brown beef, not gray beef. So I'm going to turn this up fairly high. Now, I'm going to take a little bit um, salt. We have two teaspoons of salt uh, that we're going to add to this, but I'm just going to give it a little bit of a sprinkle. And um, if you're watching your salt, you can certainly add those couple pinches. Uh, just take it from your two uh, teaspoons. But the reason I'm doing that is um, I want to I want to start to season the ground beef while it's uh, still um, raw and as it's cooking because um, otherwise uh, at least that's what my grandmother told me I don't know if it's a myth or not maybe somebody out there that's a food scientist can um, tell me but um, that's going to help um, you know flavor the meat because once the meat is browned we're never going to get that salt to kind of absorb into it so anyway that's why I do that I could have put the whole two uh, tablespoons in there which I probably would have except I already mixed my sugar in it so so we're just going to get that nicely browned I'm going to I'm going to put my onions in there shortly too but I'm going to start to get it brown also the the salt is going to help bring out some of the moisture um, and we'll show you again I know we've done this before um, this is lean ground beef uh, I think it's 90 it's 93 percent lean so it's pretty lean um, and a lot of times when you're cooking uh, ground beef uh, it looks like you end up with a lot of fat. Um, now, if you want to drain it, certainly go right ahead. But a lot of what you see during that cooking process is um, water that's being released. And that's going to evaporate as we um, cook it. So um, I don't generally, especially if I'm using a lean beef, I don't generally feel the need to uh, drain it or drain off any excess fat. But... If you'd like to, certainly by all means, go ahead. And I'm just going to let that stay on high for a few minutes. I want to see, uh, not see, I want us to develop a little bit of crust on the bottom. And when that's ready, we'll be back. All right, guys, I've kind of just left it alone for three, two, three minutes. And you can see a lot of this, this, a lot of the water is starting to evaporate. Okay, I'm going to put our onions in. And give it a bit of a stir and break up 
the beef. I don't know if you can, well, you might, you might not be able to see it there, but see, we got brown. So we've got brown beef. It's not gray. That's what we want. We want it to be brown. So we're cooking it on high. And of course, when we're browning something, we're starting to caramelize it, which is giving it lots of delicious flavor. All right, that's going to take a good 10 minutes to get everything. You don't have to stand here and stir it every moment. As a matter of fact, it's good if you kind of just let it rest a bit because it's going to get some more caramelization on the bottom too. So when that's done, we'll be back and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, guys, we've, I've shown you this before, but I want to show you um, you know that this has now been cooking for about three minutes on high um, I don't know hopefully you can see that but right over in this little corner here all right that's that's uh, mostly water so I'm going to continue to cook this until all of that uh, water is evaporated and when we come back the next time I'll show you that it's almost all evaporated um, and again that's moisture from the beef it's a little bit of moisture from the onions so um, you'll see the difference that, you know, a lot of people think that's fat. Well, it's not necessarily fat. At this point, I feel if you drain it, um, you're throwing a lot of your seasoning uh, down the sink. Um, and plus it's not quite brown to the point that I want it anyway. So you'll see when we come back, it'll be all evaporated. There'll be a little bit of fat there, but not that much. All right, guys. So we have been sauteing on high for about... 10 minutes and like I told you see all of that has a lot of the water is evaporated we do have we still have a little bit of fat in there um, it's browned at this point I'm not going to keep, keep it on high and let it continue to brown and then we're going to end up with a lot more saturated fat than we need um, all right but anyway I mean hopefully you can see the difference um, and we haven't rinsed away all our flavor all right so I'm going to reduce my heat to about medium all right and uh, for this recipe, we, we need about 24 ounces or so of, um, I forgot how I wrote it, um, bu -bu -bu -bum. I think it's about 20, 24, anyway, the recipes are in there. But again, this is a big recipe, you could cut this in half. So, uh, this is, uh, no, we, I think we need 32 ounces. This is a 24 ounce jar, so we're going to need that and about half of this one. Now... Again, I said, you know, you can use whatever your favorite jar sauce is. We all have our favorite. My favorite is the, um, the uh, it's, it's the traditional one, um, at least from the way that this company makes it. Um, I'm sure you all know it. It's got a little, it's got a little gondola on the package. But anyway, we're not going to give them free advertising. If they want to uh, call us up and sponsor us, hi, come see us. <laughs> yeah. I don't, th I don't think that's going to happen. Um, anyway, so we got our sauce in there. All right. Now we can go ahead and add our Italian season. And we got um, granulated garlic in here. We got the rest. We got our sugar, our salt, and pepper. Woo! That came up fast. We'll give that a little bit of stir around. Turn it down a little bit. And then we're going to add a half a cup. That's a really good wine, you know, when you it's uh, screwed up. Half a cup of red wine. Cup, half a cup. That should be good. Again, you can also use beef stock. You can use um, water. Of course, the, the wine is going to, the alcohol is going to completely cook out because this is going to simmer for a bit. Um, but it does just add that little... I know, kind of grown up taste to it. All right, so we are going to let this simmer for about 15 minutes. Um, we just want to get our um, spices and everything nicely mixed together in there. Um, and uh, so I'm going to actually remove this from here. I'm going to put it on the stove. Then we're going to come back and get our cheeses ready. So see you in a little bit. Okay, so we've still got our sauce uh, simmering, simmering, simmering. 
Um, and I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. Um, in this bowl, we've got all of our cheese. We've got our sour cream, um, cream cheese, and our um, small curd cottage cheese. It doesn't look all of that attractive. All right, so safety first. My blender's not plugged in. I'm going to put my next mixer paddle on. All right. And we can put this on there. Oh, see, if I had turned that, see, look at it's on. Sometimes when I move it, it switches over there. Anyway, I, did, I promise I did not plan that. Um, all right, so let's, let's get that plugged in. Now, of course, you could do this by hand. You could use a hand mixer. I have my big mixer, so I'm going to use it. And of course, we want to start off really slow or else you're going to have cottage cheese, cream cheese, and sour cream all over your kitchen. So we want to get that nice and blended together. And that's really just going to take a couple minutes. Get all nice and combined. We'll, give it, we'll push that one little more notch. All right, so that's literally going to take a minute or so. When it's done, we'll be back. Okay, guys, so we've got our cheese mixture all nicely mixed together. I'm not sure if I mention or not. For the topping, we're going to need some uh, Parmigiano Reggiano. Uh, this is Romano Reggiano, actually, um, but either one. Um, and I've got some uh, panko breadcrumbs here, um, you know, to give it that kind of casserole crunch. Um, you can put any type of topping you like on it. Um, I've done it sometimes with uh, big um, seasoned um, croutons, uh, uh, garlic, or whatever the case. Um, I don't have any of those, so I'm just going to use some panko. You could use some potato chips, uh, which would give it, you know, make it taste really, really good. Um, but anyway, so some Parmigiano Romano and some um, breadcrumbs. Um, you could also use um, my homemade Italian breadcrumbs, but I'm all out of them, so I couldn't use those. All right, so we got our uh, um, cooking spray, so just kind of lightly do the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna dive in with my hands here. So this, this part of it's pretty easy. Ooh, that's hot. Maybe I won't. Let me go grab a spoon. It'll be easier. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to taste our sauce. I'm sure it's pretty good, but just to make sure. Mm, delicious. Now, if you taste that, you might think, ooh, it's a bit salty right now but remember that's going to go in with um uh, everything and it's going to spread over everything because we really haven't salted that much more so so you want to take about half of your noodles and put them on the bottom now of course i've i did this and uh it sat for a little bit so if you were just taking this from the draining it it wouldn't be sticky like that but for our purposes it's not going to really matter So we're just, we're actually just going to do one layer. So we want about half of them on the, well, it's two. We're going to have a, a top layer, but. All right. That should be good. One more little spoonful. And I'm going to get a fork and break these up because it's hotter than I had anticipated it would be. I'm just trying to get them as 
evenly spread out as possible. All right, and then, just for some good measure, you can take a little bit of your Italian cheese and put it on there. So you're probably gonna need about a half a cup of this in total to a cup, probably a cup. Um, all right, so then we're gonna actually just take all of our cheese as it is, and we're gonna put it all on the top of that layer of noodles. And of course, I'm just trying to get it to spread evenly. noodles. I'm not quite sure where my grandmother got this recipe. I'm assuming this was my Italian grandma and this is very, this is not an Italian dish that I've ever heard of. She probably got it from um, Rita's Digest or something years ago. Or that's when people used to get magazines delivered to the house and they actually came every month when you had a subscription and you read them and you tore the recipes out, passed them around, wrote them down. All right, so that looks pretty even to me. And, oops, make sure we got everything out of there. It doesn't want to go in that little tiny corner over there. All right. Now, let's try to get our noodles a little better organized on top here. Ah, it's still hot. Ah, ah, oh, too hot. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. It should look a little prettier than this, but that's all right. We'll make it look nice. Ooh, that is hot, hot, hot. Now, if I had, uh, once I had cooked these, if I had um, rinsed them off, probably they wouldn't have gotten as starchy. But I love the starch on noodles, so. So we're basically just going to try to arrange this nicely on top. It's all going to get covered with the sauce, so whether it looks beautiful now is not going to be a tragedy. And you do want your, you want your tomato sauce to be warm at this stage. It doesn't have to be hot, 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 but you do want it to be warm because basically everything is cooked. So when we get this in the oven, we want everything to heat through. All right, this is gonna take me longer than I thought, so when I'm done with this, we'll be back. Okay, now that I've scalded my uh, fingerprints off, the only thing to do is we're gonna go and we're probably gonna use every bit of this sauce. I will at the end, we'll, we'll dump it over all at once, but. So we got those sticky noodles to kind of spread out pretty well. And why? This is the way my grandmother did it. It must have been the way the recipe was written. She did not put a second layer of sauce on that uh, other layer of noodles. Oh, this sauce smells really good. Just kind of 
spread it down, get it in those little crevices to go down through the, the noodles. So as I, we talked about it earlier, you can tell this is, there's quite a bit of um, food here. I hope you're all gonna think it's delicious or make it and think it's delicious and make a big one because really this will easily feed, what do you think, on 12, well, easily 12 people, mm -hmm. especially if you have it with a salad or then, like I said, we're going to have plenty for uh, leftovers tomorrow and for lunch. All right, that looks pretty good. We're going to go in so everything's nicely covered. And I'm going to finish it off with our Parmesan or Romano or a combination of both, whichever one is your favorite. I happen to love them both. Although, I'd have to say Parmigiano Reggiano is probably, I would take that over Romano. But since that's all I had, and I had just graded this up the other day, so. And of course, you could, this is, I know, you, I don't want anybody to think I'm a cheese snob, but when it comes to Parmesan cheese, I am a little bit. As I've always said, if you can, get the best you can. Um, and it's, you know, all comes in different grades or, uh, but if it's a true Parmesan, it's aged for, I think, a minimum of 24 months. Um, and not that the shake one is bad, that's, it's good, but if you can splurge, treat yourself to it, I think it makes a big difference. All right, so then we're just going to sprinkle some of our panko breadcrumbs on there. A nice covering. We want that to get melty in with the cheese. It'll still give us a little bit of a crunch. All right, so I think we're, I think we're good. So we've got our oven preheated to 350 degrees. Let me just wipe that off so we don't get all burnt on the outside of the pan. All right, so we're going to get this in the oven. <laughs> that's heavy. <clears throat> and that's going to go for a good... 45 to for at least 40 minutes to 45 minutes. Uh, we want it to be, we want the sauce to be bubbling and most important, we want that uh, cheese and the breadcrumbs to be golden brown and delicious. Okay, Google, set a timer for 45 minutes. All right, 45 minutes. There we go. Starting now. And we'll be back in 45 minutes. Okay, well, it's certainly smelling as good as I remember it. Uh, let's give it a check. See if we are, oh yeah, we're, we're definitely bubbling. Ooh. Got some bubblings going on the side. And we're crispy. I think that's done. Okay, guys, so we're going to, you know, probably let that cool a little bit maybe for five, 10 minutes or so. Um, and we'll sit down and eat. All right, we're back. <laughs> and it's time to eat. Um, it looks exactly like I remember it. Mm. It doesn't come out of the pan beautifully. Um, never did. Uh, if it goes a little bit more, it might be come out, but we were hungry, so I don't know why I'm going to go for my salad first, huh? Mm. Mm. The boy. Mm. All right. It's smelling so good when it's in the oven. It does really smell mm. good, huh? Hmm. Wow, it's delicious. It's good. Oh my god. Mm. Oh, it's very good. <laughs> oh, it's <so> exactly <laughs> follow the recipe. It's yeah. exactly how I remember it. Mmm. It's not, it doesn't mm. taste like lasagna. Mmm. Mmm. All of that cheese together is so creamy. Yeah. Oh my. It is absolutely as well, good as. Melts in your mouth. <laughs> yep. Oh, it's delicious. Um, 
as I said during the making of the episode, there's a lot there. And we will have that for a few days, maybe even bring some in for people to move for lunch tomorrow at your office. Mm -hmm. Very good. I'm so glad I made this and that I've kind of rediscovered it. Uh oh. Delicious. I do say so myself. Mm. Mm. Again with that. Very good. Mm. A little bit of salad. Nice complete meal. Mm. All right, I'm going to enjoy eating, mm. so that's all I have to say. Mm. Please check us out on cherryhillhomecooking.com. Please like and subscribe. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Actually, I shouldn't have said I'm not going to say anything else, but please try to make this. Oh, please make it, not try mm. to make it. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised and it will become mm. one of your favorites. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ciao. <laughs> Bye. Mmm. Mmm. This is absolutely delicious. Mmm. Mm. I need the whole pan. I know. I don't think I have a I don't think I've had a pan. Thank you.